Welcome back, let's tune in with Cool Tech. All right, so every now and then, a piece of tech news drops that makes you just lean back in your chair and go, whoa. This week, that moment came from XAI, Elon Musk's AI company. They just announced Grok 4 Fast, and the name itself tells you a lot about what they're going for here, speed. But honestly, that's just scratching the surface. This isn't just another incremental update or a slight spec bump, it feels like a fundamental shift in how we think about what these large language models can do, and more importantly, who can afford to use them at scale. XAI is claiming that Grok 4 Fast is up to 98% cheaper to run than its flagship Grok 4 model. Let me just say that again, 98%. In the tech world, we get excited about 10% improvements, 20% improvements. A 98% reduction in cost is almost unheard of especially when you're not sacrificing a massive amount of performance to get there, it changes the entire economic equation for building with AI. If it holds up, it could democratize access to high-end AI in a way we haven't seen before. This isn't just for tech nerds or big corporations anymore. Smaller developers, startups, individual creators. Grok 4 Fast is XAI's attempt to smash that barrier. You can have all three, low cost, speed, and intelligence. That will force other players to rethink strategy. This is a big one. So how did they pull this off? Well, XAI hasn't given away all their secret sauce, but it's likely a combination of model architecture breakthroughs, hardware optimization breakthroughs, new ways to process information that use significantly less computational power. They're claiming Grok 4 Fast delivers near flagship performance, almost as smart and capable as Grok 4 for a tiny fraction of the operational cost. This has huge implications. For a large company, this could mean saving millions of dollars a month on AI features, money that can be reinvested into other areas. But the real story is for smaller players. Imagine a startup building an AI-powered customer service bot that can handle complex, multi-turn conversations before the cost was prohibitive. Now, with Grok 4 Fast, it's within reach. Explosion of innovation from smaller, agile teams. This move also puts immense pressure on competitors like OpenAI, Google, Anthropic. For a while, the game was biggest, most capable model, cost was secondary. XAI flipped the script. Efficiency is now the battleground. The question shifts from how smart is your model to how efficiently can it run? This will force industry-wide optimization, more powerful, more affordable AI for everyone. The price wars in AI are officially on. Now, if the price drop wasn't enough, Let's talk about the context window. Grok 4 Fast is launching with a 2 million token context window. To put that in perspective, that's absolutely massive. A token is roughly a piece of a word, so 2 million tokens is equivalent to about 1.5 million words. That's the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, plus The Hobbit, with room to spare. It means you can feed the AI an enormous amount of information in a single go, and it can remember and reason over all of it. This isn't just an incremental increase, it's a leap that changes what you can ask an AI to do. Until now, chatbots had short-term memory limits. You could give them a document, but if it was too long, they'd forget the beginning by the end. That made tasks like analyzing long financial reports, reviewing complex legal contracts, summarizing an entire book, impossible in one step. You had to break tasks into chunks, which was slow and error-prone. With a 2 million token window, those problems disappear. You can now drop a whole code base into the prompt and ask the AI to find bugs or suggest improvements. Think about the practical applications here. A doctor could feed a patient's entire medical history, years of records, lab results, and notes, and ask for a summary of key events or potential risk factors. A lawyer could analyze thousands of pages of case law to find relevant precedents in seconds. A student could upload every textbook for a course and have a personalized tutor that understands the entire curriculum. It moves AI from simple quanta to a powerful research assistant that synthesizes vast information with full context. It's a game changer for professions handling large volumes of text. So Grok 4 Fast is cheap and it has a crazy memory. But XAI didn't stop there. They've also baked in two other key features, built-in web search and dramatically improved tool use. This means it's not just a closed box of training data. It can go out into the world and gather fresh information and interact with other software to get things done. That's a critical step toward a genuine assistant, built-in web search. Grok has always emphasized live search. With Grok 4 Fast, it's even more refined. 
Ask about a recent event. It won't rely on months-old training data. It can perform a live search, read the latest articles and data, synthesize an answer from current online info. Useful for topics that constantly change. News, stock prices, sports scores. It's the difference between a librarian and a research assistant actively browsing for you. Tool use, aka function calling, it's the AI using other tools or APIs. Example, find the best Italian restaurants near me, check their reviews, book a table for two at 8 p.m. A simple chatbot can't do that, an agent can't. Use a search tool to find restaurants, use an API to check reviews, use another API to make the reservation. Grok 4 Fast is more reliable at coordinating these steps. Put it all together. Low cost, massive context window, real-time web access, ability to use tools. Suddenly it's less like a chatbot, more like a true digital agent. Understands complex requests, remembers context, and executes in the real world. Not just information. Taking action. Grok 4 Fast is a big step toward that future, making that future more accessible than ever. Shifting gears a bit from pure software, let's talk about hardware because honestly the AI revolution needs a body. And it looks like Meta is getting ready to give it one. New reports point to next-gen Ray-Ban smart glasses with a headline feature, an integrated display. The current generation of Ray-Ban Meta glasses can take photos, play music and let you talk to Meta's AI, but you can't see anything through them. They're audio glasses with a camera. This next version however is rumored to include a small heads-up display, or HUD, this is a huge deal. It's the feature that everyone has been waiting for. The one that could finally bridge the gap between smart glasses and true augmented reality. The display is said to be a viewfinder, allowing you to see notifications, turn-by-turn -turn directions, maybe even live language translation right in your field of view. Imagine looking at a restaurant and seeing its Yelp rating pop up next to it, or following a walking route without ever having to pull out your phone. This is the kind of seamless, contextual information that AR has promised for years, and it might finally be arriving in a form factor that people will actually wear. Of course, the challenge is doing this without making the glasses bulky, dorky, or having terrible battery life. But by partnering with Ray-Ban, Meta has already solved the style problem. These look like normal glasses. The real test will be how they integrate the display technology. Will it be bright enough to see outdoors? Will the battery last a full day? And crucially, will the experience be genuinely useful or just a gimmick? The goal is to provide helpful information without being distracting or overwhelming, and that's a very fine line to walk. Along with the new glasses, Meta is reportedly gearing up to launch a companion device, a neural wristband. Now before you start thinking about mind control, let's be clear about what this is. It's not reading your thoughts. Instead, the wristband reads the neural signals your brain sends down your arm to your hand muscles. It can detect the intention to move your fingers with incredible precision, even if you only make a tiny subtle gesture or no gesture at all. It's a new kind of input device. Think about how you control your devices right now. You tap on a screen, click a mouse, or type on a keyboard. With smart glasses, those methods aren't ideal. Voice commands are an option, but not always private. A touchpad on the glasses could be awkward. The neural band offers a third option, subtle, almost invisible finger gestures. Scroll notifications by thinking about moving your index finger, or dismiss a call with a tiny thumb flick no one notices. It's a discreet, powerful way to interact with a heads-up display. This tech could solve a major UI challenge for AR. How do you click on something that isn't really there? Look at a virtual button and perform a tiny pinch gesture to select it. The band detects the intention to pinch and turns that into a click. It makes interaction feel intuitive, even magical, like manipulating the digital world with your hands. Pair the neural band with display-equipped Ray-Bans and you get a complete system. The glasses are the output, the display, the band is the input, the controller. Meta's vision move away from the phone toward a more integrated hands-free future. Questions remain, how well will it work in practice? What's the learning curve and battery life? Still, it's a futuristic concept and the race for the post-smartphone platform is on. It's not just the big AI-first companies making moves. The platforms we use every day are also integrating this tech in really interesting ways. This week, YouTube rolled out a suite of new AI-powered tools specifically designed for its creators. This isn't about replacing the creative process, but about augmenting it, making it easier for creators to produce better content, reach a wider audience, manage their channels more effectively. One of the standout features is an AI tool that helps generate video ideas and even outline scripts. 
A creator could simply type in a broad topic like healthy breakfast recipes. It could then help flesh out one of those ideas with an introduction, key talking points, a conclusion. This doesn't write the video for you, but it can be a huge help in overcoming creator's block and structuring content. Another super practical tool is AI-powered dubbing. This allows a creator to upload a video, and the AI will automatically translate the audio into other languages using a voice that sounds similar to the creator's own. This is a game-changer for reaching a global audience. Previously, dubbing a video was an expensive and time-consuming process, hiring voice actors, hiring sound engineers. Now a creator can potentially make their content accessible to viewers in dozens of different languages with just a few clicks. This could massively expand the potential audience for any given channel overnight. Finally, YouTube is also using AI to improve the comment section, which, let's be honest, can be a bit of a wild west. A new AI tool can categorize comments by topic, helping creators engage more meaningfully with their community without having to manually sift through thousands of comments. In the middle of all these exciting announcements about capabilities and cost, another company, DeepSeek, made a different kind of splash. They released a new model that is specifically designed to be safe. This might not sound as flashy as a 2 million token window or a 98% price cut, but in the long run, it might be just as important. As AI models become more powerful and more integrated into our lives, ensuring that they are safe, reliable, and compliant with rules and regulations becomes absolutely critical. DeepSeek is tackling this challenge head-on. So what does a safe model actually mean? It means the AI has been extensively trained and fine-tuned to avoid generating harmful, unethical, illegal content. It's built with strict guardrails to ensure it complies with various regulations and safety protocols. For a regular consumer playing around with a chatbot, this might just seem like a stronger content filter, but for a large enterprise like a bank, a hospital, a government agency, this is a non-negotiable requirement. They can't risk deploying an AI that might accidentally give out dangerous advice, leak private information, or violate industry regulations. The challenge has always been that making a model safer often meant making it less capable. Overly aggressive safety filters can sometimes refuse to answer legitimate questions, a problem known as false refusal. DeepSeek's claim is that they have managed to build a highly compliant model that still maintains a high level of performance and helpfulness. This is a very difficult technical balance to strike. This focus on safety and compliance is a sign of the AI industry maturing. In the early days, the race was all about raw capability. Now, as this technology moves from the lab into the real world, the focus is shifting to include reliability, trustworthiness, and safety. A model like DeepSeek's Safe AI is designed for serious, mission-critical applications where mistakes are not an option. While other companies are building sports cars, DeepSeek is building an armored truck. It might not be the fastest, but it's designed to be incredibly secure and reliable for high-stakes jobs, and for many businesses, that's exactly what they need. So when you take a step back and look at everything that happened this week, a clear picture starts to emerge. This isn't just a random collection of tech updates, it's a snapshot of the AI industry rapidly accelerating on multiple fronts at the same time. On one hand, you have XAI with Grok4 Fast, which is making top-tier AI power dramatically cheaper and more accessible. They're tearing down the economic barriers that have kept the most powerful AI in the hands of only a few, potentially sparking a new wave of innovation from developers and startups all over the world. At the exact same time, you have Meta pushing the hardware forward with their next-gen Ray-Ban glasses and neural wristband. They're building the physical interface for this new era of computing, figuring out how we're going to interact with these powerful AIs in our daily lives. It's the move away from the phone and towards a more ambient, integrated form of technology that sees what you see and understands your intent with a subtle gesture. This is the embodiment of intelligence, giving AI eyes, ears, and a way to communicate with us seamlessly. Then you have platforms like YouTube, which are taking these powerful underlying technologies and building practical, user-facing tools. They're showing how AI can be applied to specific workflows to solve real problems for real people. In this case, creators. It's not just abstract capability, it's a feature that helps you come up with an idea, reach a new audience, or manage your community. This is the application of intelligence. And finally, you have companies like DeepSeek focusing on the crucial, less glamorous work of making AI safe, 
compliant and trustworthy, which is the foundation that all of these other applications will need to be built upon. This is the responsibility of intelligence. When you put it all together, this week felt like a major turning point. The cost of powerful AI is plummeting. The hardware for a new computing paradigm is taking shape. Practical applications are becoming more refined. The focus on safety is maturing. It feels like we're moving out of the purely experimental phase of AI and into a deployment phase, where this technology starts to become a real, tangible and useful part of our everyday lives. The pieces are all moving into place, and the future they're building is arriving faster than ever. It's going to be fascinating to see what comes next.